Amen. You're ready to receive this morning? Amen. Amen. I want you to open up your heart. Close your eyes for a moment. Everyone just close your eyes. I want you to expect. Some of y'all have been waiting for God to do something for you. This is your day for a breakthrough. Grace and I was talking last night and declaring that this is a, a day of miracles, a day of power, a day that lives are going to be changed. And don't think about someone else's life needing to be changed. He's ready to change your life. He's ready to heal your heart. So I just want you to meditate just for a second on your heart. Do you know above all things that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, God is living in your heart, that your body is the temple of God, that he's not out there far off somewhere, that you know that he's living on the inside of you. If you do not know that, if that's not something that, that bears witness with you, like your spirit just knows that he lives on the inside of you before you leave this place today, you need to invite him into your heart because he's the one that can heal you. He's the one that can deliver you. He's the one that will answer your prayers. When we pray the will of God, we know that he hears us and we can have confidence that he will give us the petition that we ask him. If your heart is wounded, if someone has injured you, if there's any kind of bitterness or unforgiveness, let Jesus have it. You don't need an apology from them. All you need is Jesus. You don't need for them to come back to you and say anything to you. They may come, but you don't need for it to happen. All you need is Jesus. Jesus and what he did for you on the cross was enough. So prepare your heart right now to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God that will come into your life and change you and heal you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Grace. You want to introduce her or are you just going to let her take off? Her? All right. Come on. Thank you, All right. I am so overwhelmed. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, and as I told Pastor Mark and Pastor Stacy yesterday, I said, you know, the first time I came last year, I was a guest. This time, I'm family, so I'm expecting a whole, a whole new wave of glory, and I am just so, I'm so honored, of course, Pastor Mark and, and Pastor Stacy, I could not say it enough that I'm just so honored to be here to uh, thank you for sharing your pulpit, your, your family, uh, your congregation, and I just thank you. Because ever since I left last year, I, many, many of you, uh, probably all of you have just stayed in such contact with me and you have shared your love with me from afar that it feels like I really never left. And I just thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because you are such a display of the love of God. And you know, um, last night we had an awesome service um, and one of the promises of God for last night was that he was going to heal hearts. And, you know, that I want to let you know that if you were not here last night, that invitation still stands for today. Because this is a full weekend from start to finish. And what God started yesterday, God is going to complete today with you and with me. Everybody say amen. 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 It's a beautiful day. Like I said, I love mornings. I'm just so excited the pastors know that I really didn't get much sleep last night. I, I'm great. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. I am so great. I didn't get much sleep last night because it was my choice because I was just so, I was so anxious to get here. I was just so anxious for 10 o'clock because God has something special for us this morning. God has promised me. And thank you, Pastor, for taking a few moments for getting us all just in one accord of faith because God has promised me for this week, for this morning, this weekend, but especially this morning, that there is going to be an explosion of his power. And I have received that, and I believe it, and all, I just need about two or three of you to just agree with me because if two or three uh, or more just agree with me that we will see that explosion uh, of power this morning. And I know that there are way more than two or three that believe. So get ready, 
get your, no, I was going to say get your seatbelts on, but as a matter of fact, take them off because we're getting ready to go higher in the word of God and in the anointing of God. I want to let you know that um, I am, I, I love, uh, I love church. You know, I wouldn't call myself a, a person that was really raised in church or that I was a church girl or maybe a church teenager. But now that I know what church is and who church is, that it is us and that we are the fulfillment of the body of Christ, I love church. And I tell you that because I want to have church this morning. We've already started, but you know what? Just because the word is going on, just because I have the microphone right now, doesn't mean that you can't shout, that you can't praise. Because you know what? If everybody knew what God had done for you, then you, the, you, they would know that you had a reason to praise God. You know, I'm down here and, and you know, I, I'm, you know, move and, and, and just shout and everything because you know what? I know when I was in a wheelchair for almost two years and I know when I was about to lose my, my leg and my life. And you know what? I, nobody has to make me praise. Nobody has to make me worship. Nobody has to make me shout unto God because I know what God has done for me. But you know what? That's not just my story. That is your story too. And you might say, you know what, Grace? I didn't really, I haven't, I haven't really have, had a good life or maybe I didn't have, you didn't have a good morning. But let me tell you that all that is about to change because mornings signify new mercies mornings signify life after death mornings signify new grace they signify so much and they signify God's promises for you that will be fulfilled today so I just I give you liberty church to just get excited and I mean hey if at any point you want to run around you run around I there's nobody here that's going to stop you we're here to see an explosion of power and that is going to happen by Christ, but it's going to happen in you and inside of me. So I just want to give you that liberty to just shout amen, clap your hands, jump up, whatever you want to do, because that's what, that's what I came for. I didn't come for just another Sunday. I, you know, with me and because I know who God is, I don't have any nonchalant days. Every day is not just a normal day. I am super excited. That's why I couldn't sleep last night, because I am just so excited for this morning. And today... We, God is going to do healings of, of the heart. But, you know, just so I can let you know, so you can be on the same page with me. One of, when I was praying to the Lord specifically for this morning, God gave me a lot. But one of the main things, one of the first things that he said loud and clear, he said, today my word is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I know pastor already prayed, but I would ask if you would just bow your heads and pray with me. Father, I just thank you. Oh, how I thank you, God. How I thank you for your word. How I thank you for your plan for humanity. How I thank you for Jesus Christ, your son. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that this is not just another Sunday, God, but I give you, God, we give you the liberty to just do all, all that you, that you have planned and have ordained for today. We recognize and we acknowledge that this is not just any other Sunday. This is not just any other service, God, because you are not a nonchalant God. God, you always have awesomeness in mind. You always have greatness in mind. And Holy Spirit, I step aside to give you the liberty whenever, however, we with whoever and Lord let it start with me and let it ripple on down and I just thank you for the signs miracles and wonders that will occur this morning God because you said all we needed was to believe and that everything was possible with your name Jesus everything is possible with your name God give us the faith to believe it God, I, I just speak that faith would rise in our hearts right now. And I pray that every word that I say under your anointing, God, that it would not fall, fall flat to the ground, God, but that it would pierce our hearts, that it would pierce our minds, that it would open up the eye, the, the, our eyes of understanding, God, that we would see you, Jesus, in a new way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen, amen. amen. I want to let you know there's, uh, there's somebody very special here. It's not me. He goes by the Almighty. He goes by the author and the finisher. He goes by the beloved. He goes by the branch. He goes by the bread of life. He goes by the, the bridegroom. He goes by the bright and morning star that, that woke us up this morning. 
He goes by the carpenter, who is very skilled, and he not only builds things out of wood, but he is also building his kingdom, he is building his church, and he is building your life. He is the chosen one. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the door that is always open for you to walk on in with boldness. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the eternal father. He is the faithful and true witness. He is the firstborn. He is God. He is the head of the church, the one in charge, the one leading all of us, the one that we are following. He is your high priest. He is the apostle. He is the holy one. He is hope. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the the righteous judge and the righteous ruler. He is the king of kings. He is the lamb of God. He is the last Adam. He is the light of the world that we are all reflecting. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the living water of the spirit. He is the Lord of lords. He is the man of sorrows. He is the master that we listen to and that we obey. He is the messenger of this new covenant, this better covenant with better promises. He is the Messiah, our Savior. He is the Prince of Peace. Not just the Prince of Peace, but your Prince of Peace. He is the prophet. He is your Redeemer who still very much lives. Thank you, Job. He is the resurrection and the life. He is our one and only true Savior. He is your shepherd that is leading you. He is Shiloh. He is the son of the living God. He is the true vine. He is the only way. He is the only truth. And he is the only life. He is the wisdom of God that you need. He is the wonderful counselor that will tell you everything that you need to know. He is the word, the incorruptible, indestructible word of God. He is Yahweh, Jehovah. What is his name, church? His name is Jesus. Let's say it again. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, and that is who is here. He is all that in one, and he is here for you. And that is why we can expect to see all of the promises fulfilled. All of the promises of the word of God are yes and amen. I'm, y'all, y'all might not be able to see it, but I am like bursting, almost bursting at the seams because my heart is just, I'm just ready. I'm ready to just see the power of God explode in you. I'm ready to see the power of God explode in you. I'm ready to see the power of God explode in you. It doesn't matter if you don't see it, but I do. And I have faith. And I know I'm not the only one in here that has faith. And I'm just ready to see it erupt at any time. You know, I want to, for, there might be people here that were not here last year. And I just want to say hello and I want to say thank you and it's such a pleasure to meet you. Uh, My name is Grace Gonzalez. Uh, I am from Houston, Texas. I come from Believer's World Outreach Church. I serve my pastors there, Pastors Tommy and Rachel Birchfield and they are praying with us this morning. They are praying uh, for us this morning and I just bless them and I honor them because if it were not for Jesus and if it were not for my pastors, I would not be here today and they still very much support me. They still very much feed me. I'm still very much growing, but I honor my pastors as we should. And I pray that, you know, that you would just continue to honor your pastors because they are so deserving of it, not because they're perfect, but because they are called and chosen by God and they are anointed. They are anointed. Um, Last year when I came, I, I shared a lot of my testimony of God's grace and, um, it, you know, it's not really, it's not something different that God has done in my life, something different that, you know, God has done in your life. God has showed us grace to, you know, in all of us. And, you know, um, as I shared with some of the people last night, what I'm doing now is not and was not in my 10 or 20 year plan. You know, what I was preaching the gospel and just telling people about Jesus and traveling, this was so not in my plan. But, oh, so I am so glad for Jeremiah 29, 11, that his plans outweighed mine and that it was a good plan and that it was a plan for, 
for to prosper me because the plan that I had was very, was for destruction. But you know what Genesis 50:20 says that what the enemy meant to destroy me, God used it, God intended it and is now using it for good and and it is accomplishing what it is accomplishing so that many might be saved and that is exactly what is happening all over everywhere I go and it is not because of me, it is because of Jesus and that is that is the calling that we are all called to fulfill. And you know um, I, last year I came alone, but not alone, but this year I, I, uh, I have, I have help and, uh, uh, she's a sister in, in Christ. She's a sister in the flesh. And I just love to introduce her to you. Amer America, would you stand please? This is my sister America. And, uh, we just say thank you for having us come. And, um, you know, I'm just, I want to honor her because, you know, she is a big part of my life, and I just want to give her credit, uh, you know, and just give her honor, you know, as we should, just as a testimony of what, how we should honor, you know, our brothers and our sisters in Christ. You know, when, when I was, like I said, we were not saved uh, growing up, but, um, you know, and I was kind of basically considered the black sheep of the family, you know. I think out of everyone, I was the one probably uh, least expected to get saved, probably least expected to live you know, past the age of 20, uh, we came from, you know, we just, we grew up in a, in a Houston neighborhood that was just very much surrounded uh, and infested with gangs and, and crime and, you know, um, just generational stuff that went on in our family. You know, we, we've had family members that uh, just have been murdered over drugs and just, there's been a lot of bad history there and things that have carried on generationally, but I thank God for the blood of Jesus. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. And you know, um, my sister, I always considered her the nice one. You know, even when we weren't saved, I was like the mean one. She was the nice one. And um, last year, I also shared too about how um, I shared a lot about a sister that passed away. And um, so it's, it's my, we have an older brother, it's me, and then it's my sister, the one that I spoke about, her name was uh, Gabby, and uh, she passed away, and then this is, this is the baby, this is America. And, you know, I've just always said, even before, before I was saved, but I just always knew, and now it's even more confirmed that America, my sister, is just such a gift from God to me and to our family, you know, um, our whole family, we're just kind of rough and, and tough. And then America came along and she was like sweetness. She was just completely different, you know, from, from all of us. She's just sweetness. She was the, the lovey one, the, the kissy one. And we were like, Ugh, like, that's not our thing. We don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, now it's just um, God has, in my life, God has shown me love through her and you know it's you know I'm not perfect none of us are but she is one of my greatest encouragers and I'm just so happy that she was able to come with me this time and I told her I said I said I can't wait for you to meet everyone there they're just so awesome and they just take you right in and they just swoop you right into their hearts and I mean last night we were talking and she was like oh my god she said you're right. She goes, I don't even know how to take it. She said, they're amazing. I said, I know. I said, I told you. Um, and I, so I just thank you. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving her. And, you know, she just recently uh, got saved like a year ago. And so I, I <laughs> praise God for that. Um, I praise God for that. And, you know, just because she just got saved, um, you know, does not mean that she's not one of the first ones that I will text when, you know, hey, I need you to, to agree with me in prayer over this because she is such, um, her faith is just so great. And I tell her, sister, pray for me, pray for this, pray for that. And, you know, and I thank her because she encourages me. And, you know, as, as ministers and as leaders, you know, we need people to encourage us as well. And we appreciate it. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I'm so confident in God. I, I really, I really am, you know, but when I'm, I'm really focused and trying to get a lot of things done, you know, she'll come in my ear and she's the one that says, sister, you're the best. She says, you're the best at what you do. You're, you're the best and it's all going to come out great. And, and you're, you're awesome and you're anointed and you're just, you're, you're the best. And I just, you know, that just kind of gives me a little, it gives me charge and fuel. 
And so I just, you know, I thank her. You know, this is the first time she's come with me. She, she uh, took off a day off of work, you know, to be here with me. And she's just such a help. And so I just wanted to publicly honor her and say thank you for having us. And um, amen. Glory to God. And, you know, I, with that, I hope that you're encouraged to never stop believing for your family members. Never stop praying for your family members. Because when God calls one, he knows that you are connected to a family. God knows that you are connected to a family. He knows you are connected to a community. He knows that you are connected to a city, a state, and ultimately the world. So when God calls one, it's not just the one. It's about you and everybody else you're going to affect. And, you know, yes, God has for the past two years, probably now two years uh, consistently, you know, I've been, God has just given me the great honor and privilege to travel and preach. And, you know, I'm in this city uh, sharing the gospel, in this city sharing the gospel. But, you know, about last year, pro a little bit after I left here last year, um, God called me to start discipling uh, certain members of my, of my family. And, uh, and she was one of them. And so I'm out here, I'm out everywhere, but every other week uh, we get together and uh, I disciple them. And we, you know, we, I teach them the word and, you know, we, we really talk about um, Bible, Bible basics and foundations, you know, because we could come and I could come and give you a whole theological sermon, but what is that going to do if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to love your neighbor, if you don't know how to believe for healing from a headache, if you don't know how to believe for certain things. So um, that's what we've done. And, you know, through the, through those meetings, She's been saved. Her, uh, her boyfriend has been saved. Now her boyfriend's family is getting to be saved. And, you know, just other people have been saved and, and just set free. And, you know, um, I'm just, I'm so, I say that because I just want you to believe and I want you to know that your family members and the people around you, your neighbors, they need what you have. And we do have a responsibility to share what it is that we have inside. You know, I can't go from city to city preaching the gospel while my sister is wasting away. That's, there, there, there's an order. There, there's God, there's an order, and I have to have order in all areas of my life. And that is our responsibility as carriers of the gospel. Just because I have a microphone does not mean that I'm the only carrier of the gospel here. You all, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, the gospel lives inside of you. And now, especially in this day, we have a responsibility. And it's such a joy an honor to be able to, to shine the light of Jesus out in, into the world. And so um, just be encouraged. Be encouraged to that you can, you might not be able to change the whole world, but you can change your world. God has given you the power and the responsibility and the honor of doing so. Are you happy to be in church this morning? I know I'm going on and on, but are you really happy to be in church this morning? I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be in church. I'm grateful that I'm not in a hospital bed like I was for a few years. I'm grateful that I'm not in a jail cell like I, like I have been. I know I'm not the only one that don't look so innocent yourself. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that, that has a past, but thank God that we're not where we used to be, right, church? Thank God that we're not where we used to be. And that's why I just want to get our focus I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be in church. You know, David, it, it, it was David that said, I, I, it's, it's one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. One day in his presence, in his temple, in his courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. And when you know, when you know what all happens in the church, then you know that that is so true. And he said, I, he said, it is better to be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than it is to dwell in the tents of wickedness elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in tents of wickedness elsewhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, um, a lot of you, a lot of us are friends on, on social media, Facebook and Instagram, things like that. That's kind of all I do, Facebook and Instagram. Everything else just kind of uh, just seems hard for me. Uh, Twitter, Snapchat, I just, it's too much. I can't do it. But, uh, you know, I, I've been able to keep a, keep a relationship with a lot of you through Facebook, and so I, I thank God for that. And uh, the other day, I posted something on my Facebook, and it was kind of, um, it, it was 
words to live by from my pastor's wife, Pastor Rachel Birchfield, who is an awesome uh, preacher. She's an awesome teacher of, of the word, and she's just, I mean, you know, in my spiritual book, it's Jesus and then Pastor Rachel. And uh, so I've just, you know, and I trust her. I, I trust the anointing on her. And so anyways, one time she had kind of just given some words of wisdom, and, and I took them, you know, I took them to heart, and, and they're so awesome words of wisdom to live by. So I posted them on my Facebook, you know, and this, uh, this lady, she comments, and she says, wow, she said, I was wondering what happened to you. She said, now I know, now I know, because th this is awesome information, what, what you've just shared and what your pastor told you. She said, I was wondering how you got so strong in the Lord and how you just have such a love and a passion for the Lord. She said, wow, now I know. And, you know, yes, I love my pastor, Rachel, and, and, and I would not, like I said, I would not be here today if it were not for Jesus and, and her, and I give her all the, all the glory and the honor. But you know what, when I read that comment from that lady, I immediately, something jumped in my spirit, and I wrote, and I said, oh, hold on, my friend. I said, hold on. And I, I wrote a long comment, and I said, and, you know, respectfully, because I know she, she meant that in a great way. Uh, but I just had to, I had to clear the air. I had to clear the air, and I had to give the honor to where it was due. And I said, hold on. I said, yes, this is great stuff to live by. I said, and we honor the people that are in our lives. I said, but what happened to me was that I was lost and now I'm found, that I was bound, and now I'm free, that I was dying, and Jesus came to rescue me, and then, and then he, he rescued me, and he showed me who he was, and then, and then I grabbed a hold of his word, and then I found out who he was, and I fell in love with Jesus. I said, and every day I live out my gratefulness. It is his faithfulness that fuels my gratefulness every single day. I said, I fell in love with Jesus. That, my friend, is what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I want to let you know that if there was a time that you had fallen in love with Jesus and you had such a passion and such, such a fire, but now you feel like you're kind of dim, you can fall in love with Jesus again today. You can give your whole heart to Jesus again today. And, you know, I don't know if this is just me or this is, you know, other people as well, but there, there are times where I just have my, I feel like my love for God is so great that I actually even physically feel that my heart is like enlarging. I feel like it's about to burst sometimes, you know, and I'm like, oh, if I have something medical happen, I'm going to heaven, okay? But, you know, so it really doesn't worry me. But, I mean, I say that to just really really explain to those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, who do not know what I'm explaining and describing, that you can fall in love with Jesus in such a way that you could live victoriously every day and that any problem, any tribulation that would ever come your way would just be minor details. What people consider big problems to me are minor details that are passing and that are fading because I know who will never leave. I know who is eternal. And I have fallen in love with him. That's what happened to me. That's what can happen to you over and over again. If you have never fallen in love with Jesus, I'm just declaring by faith that it's, that's going to happen today. Because that will change the course of your life. And not just your life, but everyone else that is connected to you. And that is when you will be the happiest that you will ever be. That is where you will be the happiest that you will ever be. And, you know, so I, I wrote this back to this lady, and, uh, you know, it just, it just started something in me. It started to flow just something in me and, and something, that, uh, something that I pray is infectious to you, that is infectious everywhere I go. You know, we, we see... We, we see this world especially, you know, I don't have to tell you what's going on in the world. I don't have to tell you what's going on in the news. We all, we all know, and, you know, um, it's bad. But the, the Lord spoke a word to me, and he said, Grace, as the world is getting worse, the church is getting better. As the world is getting worse, the church is getting better. You are the church. I am the church. So if you feel like your days are not getting better, if you feel like oh, things just keep happening, things just, you know, uh, 
things keep going bad, things keep going south, then there needs to be a heart change. There needs to be a heart change. There, there needs to be a mind change. And you know what? It's not hard because it all happens and it is, it is possible in the presence of God. And that is where we're at. I want to let you know that it's safe to trust Jesus. It is safe to trust him with your attitude. It is safe to trust him with your hurts. It is safe to trust him with your words. It is safe to trust him with your cold shoulder. I know probably, probably a lot of people won't say that, but you know, when I first met Jesus, I didn't come to him with gratefulness. I didn't come to him with, uh, you know, honor and glory, I, giving him all the praise. I didn't come like that. I came to him when I was lying on a, on, a, on a freeway with my bones sticking out of my leg after I had tried to commit suicide again after flipping my car uh, numerous times on a freeway. And I went to him and I cursed him. I cursed him because I blamed him for everything that had gone wrong in my life. And I said, really, God, now this? And look where I am today. That is why I can let you know without a shadow of a doubt that God can handle you. God can handle you. However uh, rough and tough you think you are, however, not, st <laughs> not stubborn anymore, but what's the word? Tenacious we think we are. Pastor Mark said not to you stubborn that we are tenacious. So I received that. Um, it doesn't matter how tenacious you are how rough and tough you think you are, how dirty you think you are, how, I won't say dumb, but simple you think you are, God can handle you. God can handle you. He is God Almighty. And so I'm, I'm telling you this because I want you to prepare yourself because uh, close to the end of the service, we're going to, this space here is going to be open and filled with the presence of God. And however you came, you come down here boldly to the throne of grace, to his throne of grace, and God will do a heart change in you today. Amen? Do you receive it? Amen. Well, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, you know, we, we, uh, we grew up in Houston, and so, um, you know, I, something that the Lord uh, whispered in my ear just a little while ago that I, I want to say that, when I was a teenager, uh, something, several things happened, but all of a sudden, I got a stutter. I stuttered really bad, and I was about 16, 17 years old, and I, um, it got so bad to where there were times and even days where I just, I, I just wouldn't talk. I would choose not to talk because it was too hard to talk. I would try to get things out, and it, and it wouldn't come out, and... Um, but look at God, that he would call me to be a preacher, that he would call me to be a, a, an, an exhorter and a teacher of the gospel. And, you know, I say that because the Lord whispered to me and he said that there are people in this congregation today that he has called to speak about him, to speak up about him. But you feel like you feel either that you have a speech problem that holds you back. You feel like um, either you're too simple, you know, that you don't know uh, grammar well, that you don't know, you know, biblical terms well, and it stops you. And the Lord whispered that to me, and, and that's why he, he had me to share this. He brought it up to me, to my remembrance, and uh, I just, I want to ask if you would be bold, if that's you, if you feel like, you know, man, I, there are times, uh, and I, I feel like I want to speak up, I need to speak up about God, but this is holding me back, having to do with either your speech or the fact that you don't know, uh, you think you don't know big enough words. Would you just lift your hand real, real fast? Just, wow. God knows who you are. Amen. Would you just lift them up real, real fast again? I want to see. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I just declare that by the Spirit of God that your lips would be loose, that your mouth would be loose, that your mind would be enlightened, and that you would get a boldness to speak about God, that you would be a a, get a boldness to speak about Christ. We call it done in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, that's being obedient. That's being obedient to the Holy Spirit. I don't have to know what you're going through. God knows what you're going through. 
And if we just keep our ears open and keep our eyes open, then God is faithful to move and we are obedient. Amen. Y'all get ready. If y'all are noticing, if you're catching it, the power of God is slowly just exploding, exploding. So we're getting ready. I want to, um, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, God really put on my heart this morning, he said, um, to share, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, um, when God mentioned, there were several times in the Bible when God mentioned these words or, or words similar to this, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord or see the deliverance of the Lord. Every time he said that to his children, it's because they were in situations where the odds were just stacked against him. They were in situations that seemed humanly possible to overcome. And you know, I know, I know by the Spirit of God that there are people here that have situations that feel it's just humanly impossible to overcome this. It's humanly impossible that this would work out in my favor. I want to let you know that God knows exactly who you are. There are people here that God spoke to you just last week. Again, I'm listening to the whispers of God. There are people here that he spoke to you just last week and said, you need to be in this place on Sunday. Not because of the guest speaker, but because of the word going forth. And because he knows your situation. He knows that the odds are stacked against you. He knows that there are enemies all around your borders. But you know what? The Bible also says and declares that when you turn to Jesus, that he would make salvation your walls and he would make turn your gates into praise amen amen i see god working i see god working right now i want to i want to talk I w if you have your bible i'd like you to turn with me please to exodus uh chapter 14 exodus chapter 14 this will be the only scripture that we turn to in our bibles today um, and then we'll just, we'll talk about some other things. But I want you to see this. Exodus 14. We're going to verses 13 and 14. Again, we're talking about stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to read verse 13. It says, and Moses said to the people, and this was a message coming from God to them in that moment, but this is a message of God coming to us today. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Somebody say today. today. He says, for the Egyptians, or in other words, your enemies today, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Somebody say, no more, forever. Come on, say it again, no more, forever. Verse 14 says, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall not you might, but you shall hold your peace today. You might say, I don't have it. Well, you know what? The Lord is, is just, he's just pouring it down right now. It is your job to reach up and grab it and say, I, I got it. I got it. I got my word. I need that peace. I am declaring that, yes, again, the Lord will fight for me. Because you know what? The Lord has done it before. He's going to do it today. And he will always do it. The Lord will always fight for you. The fear and the doubt comes when we start thinking, oh, I got to do that. I got to do this. Oh, my God. I, I should have done that. I should have. Now it's too late. And now, look, now my kids are messed up because I wasn't a good mom 10 years ago. Oh, man, maybe I married the wrong husband. Maybe I this and that and this and that. No, the Lord has always been fighting for you. The Lord will fight for you today. He will fight for you tomorrow. He will fight for you 20 years from now. And you shall forever hold your peace. And your enemies and your fear and your doubt will be no more. No more forevermore. 
And then in another portion of scripture, it says that he will wipe away even the memory of them. There are people that cannot live in victory today because of the memories that haunt you. Because of those old feelings that come up when you get in certain situations. Feelings of, of, of inferiority or, or doubt or, or depression. And it's like... Wait, I thought I was a Christian. Why am I feeling that? Then you start, you start getting down on yourself. And you start to, man, well, maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. No, what you need to do is stand up and declare again that the Lord will fight for you. And I will hold my peace. Amen? Amen. Joshua 3, you don't have to turn there. I'm just going to paraphrase. In Joshua 3 is where the Lord utters this message again. It's when uh, the crossing of, of Israel, of the Jordan River, God instructed the people. He, he told them, when you come to the brink of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. And the Lord added, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest shall rest in the waters of Jordan, then the waters of Jordan shall be cut off and they shall stand upon a heap. God was saying, when you get to the water, plant your feet in it and just stand there. Be still and rest. Don't try to figure out what he's up to. Just wait for him to act. And he said, I will part the waters for you. If you just plant yourself, plant your feet, plant yourself in the church, plant your feet in the church and God will fight for you. A lot of people I don't understand why a lot of people feel they have to run from the church. God has called us to be planted in the church. And then he said he would part the waters for you. He would make a way for you. The church is your safe place. Not so much the people in the church. Yes, God puts people in the church to, to be a, an encouragement to you, but they're not your savior. They are not your savior. Jesus is your savior, and this is where he resides. Can God touch you in your, in your bedroom? Yes, he can. Can he touch you on the side of the street? Yes, he can. But you know what? You cannot forsake the church. You cannot forsake the assembly of the saints. Because, yes, there is a, the anointing of God can show up when you're alone in your bedroom, but there is also a corporate anointing. There is, there is a corporate anointing that comes and that and that that is strong enough to break certain things in your life when you come and when you join hands and you join hearts and you lock faith and you honor the pastors and you honor the leadership and you say, you know what, I might not understand everything, but I'm here because I'm honoring God. I'm here because the church was the idea of Jesus. I'm here because the body of Christ, because I am a part of the body of Christ. And that's why I'm here. And whatever seems that, that needs to be fixed, God is going to fix it. He will fight for us. As long as I do my part in showing up and honoring him, then God will fight for me and I will hold my peace. The church is a beautiful place. Please don't ever feel like you, don't ever feel like you have to or must forsake the church. That is one of the biggest mistakes that I feel Christians do when things don't go their way. That was not in my notes, so, so I, know that, uh, I know that we had to hear that. <laughs> and and that, that's, not a, that's not an insult on, on, you know, most of what I'm saying, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. If you've ever heard that expression, you know, that's, uh, that means that, you know, I know y'all are a well-fed church. Y'all are a strong church with strong leaders, and y'all are beautiful people. But we always have to be open for growth and be open to change. The Lord says, remind yourself daily of my benefits. Remind yourself daily of my statutes. Amen. So um, another place where God in the Bible utters this message, and I believe that this is a word for people in ministry and for people who feel that they um, feel that they're called to ministry. And I'm referencing 1 Samuel 9.27 for those that are taking notes. You don't have to go there, but you can just write that in your notes and look it up later. And uh, this talks about after Samuel anointed Saul as king, he escorted him to the edge of the city. And there was a point during, that, uh, during this moment where Samuel said to Saul, 
Stand thou still a while that I may show you the word of God. Samuel was basically saying, Saul, I've anointed you. God has anointed you. And your mind is already racing. You're already thinking, well, what is God doing? You know, uh, how can I know his voice? How am I going to know what to say? How am I going to know this? But he said, stand still and listen, and I'll give you God's word. You know, yesterday at our, at our meeting with the ladies, we, uh, we really put an emphasis on, on the word of God. Because the word of God is the will of God. And if, we are, if we're, if we're going to call ourselves or, or want to be or aim to be people of the word, then we need to be people that are in the word. And that is where you will get direction. That is where you will get um, instruction, as, as we see here. And I feel that that was specifically a word for, for people in, in ministry. And those of you who feel that are called to ministry, don't try to figure it out. You know, when God, when God told me uh, before I was ever on a pulpit or given a microphone and God told me one time when I was in my car I still hadn't even uh wasn't really even sure if I was really saved just because I didn't know that whole knowledge and God said I need you God told me he said I I love to read and at that point I was reading just a lot of Christian books you know autobiography things like that and the Lord told me at one point he said that's good but I need you to put that down for a second and I need you to pick up my word because honestly in that time the Bible was the last book that I picked up. And he said, I need you to pick up my word because I'm going to call you to preach. And so when he told me that, I said, I mean, I didn't see it happening, but I said, okay, God, I, I believe, I receive. And I said, okay, God, well, in 20 years, you know, when I start preaching, um, you know, maybe I'll know a little something. Maybe by in 20 years I'll be able to, to recognize, you know, some of the scriptures or things like that. And, um, and then, so I picked up the word and I kid you not, I mean, every day I was staying, every night I was staying up to four in the morning, just reading and reading and I couldn't stop. I, I couldn't stop. There was something in me and I just kept reading. I wanted to read more. And, uh, I mean, I did this for months, staying up to four and, and I know that it was God just, you know, building me and, and just planting me with his word. Again, I'm sharing word for people that feel uh, that they're called to the ministry or you've been spoken you've been spoken to a word from God or by a trusted leader that says hey you're a leader you're you're called to help the church in this area you're called to help the church in that area if that is you if that has been spoken over you and you believe it and you receive it then don't try to figure it out don't get all hung up well I don't know this or I need to that you know what God could call you tomorrow and it is your to start doing what he told you to do and you need to have that confidence to say, I am ready. I am ready. Not because you know everything, but because you have this. This is everything. You have everything. And God just wanted me to share that, to honor the word, to, to share with you, pick up the word. If, it's, if, this, if this is the last thing that, that we're resorting to, then let's make a change. Let's make this our first response and not our last resort. Amen? Amen. I want to reference uh, real quick Second Chronicles. You can write, for those that are writing down notes, you can write that down. In Second Chronicles, we read that Judah was being invaded by a coalition of, of mighty armies. And the scriptures say that King Jehoshaphat, he feared. He was scared. He was scared, and he, but he set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast in all of the land, in all of Judah. That's Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20, verse 3 for those that are taking notes. And it says that the people began uh, to pray, crying, in your hand, is there not power, God? Is there not might so that none is able to withstand you? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Because that sounds like a lot of us. That sounds like a lot of us, perhaps even this morning. You know, it's not a sin to feel fear. Don't feel like because you're scared you can't say anything or, or because maybe you're, you, you're in a leadership position or you're a parent or you're in charge of this or you're the usher or you're on the praise and worship team. Don't feel that because you're in that position that you cannot come to God or your pastors and say, I feel fear. 
Feeling the sin is not a fear. God is not going to condemn you for feeling the fear, but it is wrong if we act on that fear and if we don't cast it out and if we don't use Jesus to stand against it. So I believe that that's also a word for, for several, if not a lot of people here today that um, we see here in the scripture, but it's also a word for us today that although the people felt fear, they set themselves to seek the Lord and they proclaimed a fast. They did something. They did something to say, you know what? And in that case, it was fasting. This morning, it might be, you know what? I need to do something. I need to go to the altar today. I need to, I need to go and pray for that sister that God told me to pray for the other day, and I didn't do it. I need to go to this person and say, you know what? I'm struggling. I need help. You need to seek the Lord, and don't be ashamed of your fear. Don't be ashamed of your fear. We need to speak it out so that then we can put the name of Jesus on top of it. And then that fear will be cast out forever in his mighty name. So back to this, this portion of scripture. Then after that came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. That's verse 14. Here is what the spirit commanded. And this is what God is commanding. It's not a choice, guys. It's not a choice. It's a command. He says, be not afraid nor dismayed for the battle again is not whose? It's not yours, but it is God's. You will not need to fight in this battle. What kind of battle is that that you won't need to fight? That's a battle from straight from the throne of God. That's our kind of God. And he said, this is so amazing. He said, set yourselves, S-E-T, set yourselves and stand still to see the salvation of the Lord that is with you. Set yourselves and stand still so that you would see the salvation of the Lord. This phrase here, set yourself, stand still, what it means is take your position. It means take your position, don't waver in these matters. In other words, take your position of what? What's the position? The position is faith. Amen. Yes, sir. Be convinced. We need to be convinced. Just like we're convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God, as we should be convinced, we should be 100% convinced that the battle is the Lord's and that is not ours. Are you 100% convinced that what you're going through right now when it seems that people have forsaken you, are you 100% convinced that God will fight for you, that he's going to come for you, that he will stand in the gap for you? If there is even 1% of, of doubt in your mind or in your heart that says, you know what, I, I know God, I feel like I know him, I've seen him do things, I hear the testimonies of the miracles, but... I don't know, there's something feels like I've, like I've been waiting too long. I've been waiting too long for my, for my answer, for my victory. I don't know, or, or maybe I've been, you know, I've been secretly sinning, or I've been, you know, just, I went back on a promise that I made to God, and I, and I messed up, and so I just, I really feel like he might not come through for me in this situation. You know, that's a real feeling. Those are real thoughts of Christians, of people in the church. And it's not anything to be embarrassed about, but it is something to take a stand about. To take a stand and take a position of faith about. Take a position of faith. Be convinced that the battle is the Lord's. And be convinced that any demon that comes against you does not have to come against you and you alone. But that demon has to come against the Christ in you. When we think about trials and you know spiritual you know evil coming towards us sometimes we think man I don't know enough scripture or I'm not strong enough and so when you start to think I have to fight I have to fight with the little knowledge that I know then that's when that fear comes in that's when you you start to feel like wow I you know what I'm probably not going to make it through this one but when you get that mind shift and when you get that heart shift and when you get that spirit shift that, you know what, this demon is not coming against me. This demon doesn't, I don't even have to look at this spiritual evilness in the face because when it comes up to me, it has to face the Christ in me. 
this is not attack against me. This is an attack against Jesus Christ inside of me. And I know that he is fighting for me. And I know that he is the victor. And I know that he has overcome. And I know that God has placed him above all principalities, above all powers, above all might and all dominion. And I know that every name has to bow out at the name of Jesus. And I know that whatever has caused me fear that it is not, I don't have to fight it anymore. I have remembered because you know what? Sometimes things happen in our lives that we forget. We forget that we have the authority and the power of Jesus. We forget that he rose from the dead and that that resurrection power resides in us and in our church. We forget that if somebody comes to me with a, with a tumor that I can say in the name of Jesus, be gone and it will be gone. And I say that with all confidence. It's not something that I'm hoping. It's not something that I'm wishing. I say that with all confidence. You know, I shared about how I'm not just, I'm not just traveling to churches, uh, you know, coming up to the pulpits and just, you know, speaking and preaching. No, I'm also, when I'm not traveling, I'm, I'm in Houston where the Lord has placed me. And I am, and I am, uh, we're doing outreaches and we're, we're ministering to the, to the homeless and we're ministering to the drug addicts and, and we're ministering to the people who who the world has dismissed who the world has counted as hopeless and you know and in those in those in one apartment complex I passed a man who was in a wheelchair and spirit of God just had me go over and I asked him I said I said do you want to get out of that wheelchair and he said I have pain I said I didn't ask you if you had pain I asked you if you wanted to get out of that wheelchair and he said well yes I prayed for him we prayed for him. About 10 minutes later, he walked. He walked on his own two feet around to the apartment complex and came to join us. Came to join us at where we were ministering to the other people. The power of God is real. The power of God is here. God promised us this morning an explosion of his power. It's not for the person, it's not just for the person next to you, to your left and to your right. This is for you. God wants to explode his power in you.